Hello everybody, welcome back to the HashiCorp Certified Terraform Associate Practice question. Question number 16. So let's get straight to the question. You have 5 to 7 developers working on your Terraform project using Terraform open source version and you have saved the Terraform state in a remote S3 bucket using the Terraform S3 backend. However, sometimes you are observing inconsistencies in the provision infrastructure or failure in the code. You have traced this problem to simultaneous or concurrent runs of Terraform apply command for two or more developers. What can you do to fix this problem? So number one, we are using Terraform open source version. We are using a, a S3 backend. So our state file is being stored in S3. And when multiple people are basically working on the project at the same time. So three developers are running Terraform apply at the same time. So basically what is happening, there is some problems or inconsistencies or issues that we are waiting observed, mostly because that everybody is trying to touch the Terraform state at the same time, right? Because there is only one Terraform state in the S3 bucket. So all of these individuals are trying to touch the Terraform state at the same time. And this is leading to inconsistencies or issues. So what can we do? So option A. Structure your team in such a way that only one individual will run Terraform apply. Everyone will just make changes and share with them. Then there will be no chance of any inconsistency. Obviously, there will be no chance of any inconsistency. But then what is the point of collaboration? If everybody is just writing the code, they are not getting an opportunity to test. And then what they are saying is that there is only one person who is going to do all the merging and all of this. Then it makes no sense. Then Terraform, if it is so fragile, then nobody will use it in a team environment. So option A should not be the correct answer. Then we are coming to option B where it is saying stop using Terraform state and store the developer TF state in their own machine once a day. All developers should sit together and merge the state files manually to avoid any inconsistencies. Again, not a very good option. Obviously, this might also work, but merging Terraform state files is a very difficult work because different people are changing different things. So it is not at all the way. That is the way reason why Terraform introduced the concept of Terraform state so that multiple people can work on the same infrastructure from different machines without having to merge and do this kind of reconciliation. So option B is not the correct option. Option C, use Terraform workspace feature. This will fix this problem by default as every developer will have their own state file and Terraform will merge them on the server side on its own. Again, incorrect answer. Terraform workspace will not give different uh, if you are using Terraform workspace along with remote state, then you are not going to get different Terraform state files as per different um, uh, developers. You will only get different state files as per different workspaces. For example, if you have three workspaces, dev, QA, and UAT, you will get three state files. Secondly, there is no concept of Terraform server as such where the merging will happen. It is just a remote backend, which is a storage layer where the TF state is getting dumped, nothing else. So for example, using Terraform workspaces gives some sort of an isolation between different environments, but it does not solve this kind of a problem. Option D is enable Terraform state locking for the S3 backend using DynamoDB table. This prevents other from acquiring the lock and potentially corrupting your state. This is an answer. So we need to use Terraform state locking. What is this? Some of the backends, they will support your state logging. For example, S3 backend supports a state logging using AWS DynamoDB. So what happens when somebody is working on the mm, Terraform, say somebody has run a Terraform apply, then a lock is captured on the state file. Unless and until that Terraform apply, the first run occurs and completes and the lock is released, nobody else can capture the lock, meaning everybody else will be in a queue or they will have to wait. This will uh, that even if there, this will ensure that even if there are n number of guys who are working with the same Terraform state backend, okay, but if they try to do any Terraform operation which affects the state, there will be some sort of a queue in between. So, for example, if somebody is working, the other person will not be able to code up the state file. Meaning, this is the state locking feature, which is a very good feature. Which, for example, in AWS, if you are using an S3 backend, you need an AWS DynamoDB. For Azure, it is inbuilt. If you are using Azure Blob Storage, but at the end of the day, state locking is very need, important if there are multiple people who are working on the same Terraform state backend with the same Terraform state then you need to lock the state when you are working on something right so you need to lock it you need to work on it the when your work finishes you need to release the lock and then somebody else can capture it so this is the correct answer where D so this question is basically very important and it tries to basically understand your knowledge of the Terraform state and how it handles the different use cases like Terraform remote backend, Terraform state locking, Terraform state commands and all of these which are very important because Terraform relies on Terraform state internally to do 90% of its use cases, right? So for example, the answer is D, enable Terraform state locking for the S3 backend using DynamoDB table. Now let us quickly go 
to the state locking. So what it is saying, if supported by your backend, Terraform will lock your state for all operations which could write state. This prevents others from acquiring the lock and potentially corrupting your state. It happens automatically on all operations which could write state. You won't see any message that it is happening. If the state locking fails, Terraform will not continue. Again, not all backend support locking. Please view the list of backend types for details on whether a backend supports locking or not. So here if you can come to S3, okay, it is a standard backend where locking is via DynamoDB. So you can store the state as a given key in a given bucket and it also supports state locking and consistency via DynamoDB, which can be enabled by setting DynamoDB table field to an existing DynamoDB table name. Single DynamoDB table can be used to lock multiple remote state files. Terraform generates key names that include the values of the bucket and the key variables. Okay, so for example, you have to understand, so you can go over this entire thing about state locking. Also, this section about state, its purpose, importing existing workspaces, remote state sensitive data, everything, and also some sort of the backends and which support, for example, the state locking and all of this, for example, Azure RM backend and all of those use cases. Okay. So it also supports state locking and consistency checking via native capabilities of Azure Blob. So in Azure Blob, you don't have to do anything like an Azure Cosmos DB similar to DynamoDB or anything. It is by default natively supported. It supports native state locking. So DynamoDB is needed for Azure uh, AWS along with S3 bucket, but for Azure, you don't need anything as such. So you need to understand this. So this state locking is very important. You need to understand the concept of obviously Terraform state and why state locking. If multiple people are using Terraform state at the same time, you need state locking to ensure that multiple um, check-ins or multiple attempts does not for example impact your um, uh, impact your consistency of your terraform state it does not corrupt your state thank you everyone take care and uh, let me know in case of any concern